15th Street was where we didn't have to lock the windows or the doors. You could leave the keys in your car overnight and no one would steal it. They'd probably wash it for you. The Helms Bakery truck would come down the street tooting its horn. And of course, we'd go in and beg our mother, could we please get some of that delicious applesauce cake? We had Ador, milkman, Al the milkman, delivering everything it, that from you know eggs and butter and, of course, milk and cream. And then we'd go on the truck and say, Al, mother said we could have ice cream. So he'd take it in. And my mother would say, where'd this come from? And Al would say, well, the, Debbie and Stephanie and, and Mike, as my brother was known, said you said it was OK. So you know how that goes. It was a pleasant way to manipulate your parents and get treats. But it was just all so safe and happy. Growing up by Averill Park, which is in 1976, approximately, was called by National Geographic, one of the most 25 most beautiful parks in America. It's about 11 acres. It's an extraordinary place with flora and fauna that was brought around the world. It was like our other backyard, going crawdad fishing in the little uh, lovely pools and the bridges. Weymouth Corners is at 8th and Weymouth. It's an enclave, again, another pion to the charm of that era of the 50s and 60s, just sweet and pristine and safe. Um, there was Clara's Flowers, Clara Stowich, who was a very stalwart, uh, revered woman of our town. She'd been honorary mayor. Her husband, Tony, was a crazy Croatian fisherman, as a matter of fact. Cross Pharmacy, the ballet studio, Rosalie and Alva, uh, the church I grew up going to, the First Presbyterian Church, a block away, Dahlquist Nursery School. And then Peterson's Market at the corner of 8th and Weymouth with Mrs. Peterson, who was a stern little lady who seemed like she might be mean, but she really was trying to impart a kind of discipline when the children would go in there after school to get their little treats, candies, and, and uh, ice cream. And she was uh, a really kind, decent person, though. And then, of course, Perry's Variety Store, an old-fashioned, real variety store, Five and Dime, which had everything from kitchen equipment and egg beaters to ribbons and some yardage and, of course, the candies. That's what we loved. And then Rip's Cafe, the other spot, a, a true old-fashioned soda fountain. The Hacienda Hotel was built approximately 1953 to 55. The premier architect, one of the premier architects of the last century was Richard Neutra. They call it mid-century modern now, what he did. He designed this beautiful motor hotel on Miraless Drive, which is just at the top of First Street. And it was community owned. So people like my father, who could afford to and had some prosperity, would invest it in this. And then there were some main investors. It was a beautiful setting. Curiously, the swim club that was attached to it, with the Olympic-sized pool, was called the Polynesian Swim Club at the Hacienda Hotel. So you have one extreme to the other. Every major event in town of the late 1955 to about 1959 happened there weddings and christenings and when the bus that dad had uh, commissioned about for grandfather was created and dedicated that was, was, it, was where the party was i still remember it it was an idyllic time in america it's not an exaggeration that it was out of the leave it to beaver television series or the donna reed show people were warm they were friendly everything felt safe <laughs> 